Uh, welcome back to Relatives of Weddings Explained. I'm Aubrey Boyd with my wife, Deidre Boyd. Hello, everyone. And we're here with the engineer extraordinaire, Mr. Perry, and uh, we're going to explain each chapter to you in, in detail and give you some backstory. Hope you like it. Enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, um, Relative Weddings Explained, Chapter 11, and this is Dream Dress, the sequel. So we have come back around to the wedding, or the... Uh, I keep wanting to call it the wedding store, but to the uh, the bridal, bridal shop, shop. <laughs> and um, and we are here to uh, to get new dresses. And so, of course, you know, Teresa had that custom made peach dress that has now been destroyed. Uh, I don't think it could come back from a uh, a downpour like that. I don't think there's any recovering mm, it. At all. And certainly, Judy's dress is <laughs> unrecoverable. It's in pieces. <laughs> yes. So, and I, I think even if she could put it back together again, she wouldn't want to have anything to do with that dress again. No. So, so they are back here to uh, to find something new and different. So, talk to us a little bit about. Um, well, about, you know what, Teresa kind of kind of has a bit of fun with her sister here. And it might seem a bit mean, but it actually seems like uh, siblings doing something fun and it ends well. But uh, how does she how does she kind of mess around with uh, with Judy a bit? Well, with this one I want to say been separate both of them was two separate parties at the bridal shop. This time they all came together as one. So it's one big bridal part party. And Teresa, being that she had the most money and she already had another dress ordered, she tried to put her dress on first when everybody, to get everybody approval. Even her mother-in-law loved the new dress, which was a gold dress. It wasn't peach this time, more, more elegant to her mother-in-law taste. So everybody loved that dress. I want everybody, you know, she got her moment. And then she plays a game with her sister, knowing that her sister didn't have enough money to get the dress that she ordered. Because her dress this time was like $40,000. Yeah. So on this next one, uh, Judy plays, uh, Teresa plays a game with Judy. I, I actually had the staff at the bridal shop help her by giving her sister some hideous dresses at the beginning <laughs> and make her put these dresses on one worse than the next. Oh, my gosh. That was a downpour on her on her mood. Mm-hmm. But she knew what she wanted, and they had her trying on all these dresses in her, her price range. Ooh, it was something to see. And one's like a tea cozy dress, she calls it. It's so <laughs> bad. Because she has her pick out the worst ones possible. Come on out, girl. Show us the dress. <laughs> so, you know, there's definitely a visually going to be very funny. You know, because she she's putting on dresses from the 70s and everything else. They're cheap. She can afford them. But who wants them, you know? Right. All right. She tried to put on the, the happy face. The, okay. How does this one look? Knowing it's hideous. Well, speaking of the uh, the seventies, yeah, that uh, Teresa's dress sounds a bit disco as well with that <laughs> with that shiny gold. Yeah, but you know, Teresa want to be seen. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> true. It's true, and that dress is definitely going to stand out. Maybe even more so than the peach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she thought her mother in law would like it a little bit more, but it's still not white. It's still not traditional. Mm-hmm. Right. She has her own style. Right, and and as far as uh, Judy's dress. Uh, what does she call it? She says she looks like she's ready for the vintage housewife competition instead of the uh, the wedding challenge. Yeah, so you can imagine how that dress looks. <laughs> well, and you, you paint, a, again, a very visual picture, and I know that we're going to see that in uh, future animated versions, but, but in this version, you do a great job of describing not only the attractive dresses, but the unattractive ones as well. Yeah, again, when I write these uh, books... When I convert them from a screenplay to a book, I can add more detail. So I really want you to see it in your mind's eye and know exactly. I mean, I did a lot of research on this to know how it would confirm to a woman's body. You know, the, the, the delicate details they were looking for is like at least I was just looking at episodes and seeing what they like about the dress. Flattering and unflattering. Mm-hmm. And say so watching the, the show Four Weddings, mm-hmm. you know, they had to judge each other's dresses. Oh, I haven't seen the show. So yeah, that's what happened. they okay. had to judge each other's uh, of the four dresses. Yeah, they all had different styles. Some were traditional, some were non-traditional, some were body conforming, some had lace, some were you know the the buttons up the back, some were corsets, uh, some were looked like 
uh, I don't want to be offensive, but uh, like an Amish type dress yeah. or a farm made dress and or a mermaid dress. Like there's different type of dresses and depending on your body shape and your personality is the right. dress that you try on. So they, uh, Teresa picked out dresses that were totally opposite of, Drew, of Judy's likes and tastes. Because she knows them so well. She, she knows, knows exactly so what she well. would like. Remember, they had that book. They had that dream book. So she knows what she was looking for. Right. She knows what type of dresses she was looking for. And it was nothing, nothing like what she was looking for or the <laughs> colors she was looking for. You can say it was a cruel joke, but it was funny, too. <laughs> Now, for the research, you know, did you go, you watched the show, but did you go on the internet? Did you have those giant bridal magazines that they have uh, that are like I didn't the do the Sears magazines, catalogs? but definitely the internet and TV shows and just getting reaction. And I went to a few weddings, so yeah. and I was always paying attention to details. Yeah. Some dresses look nice and some are... Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> yeah. Who and paid gotta, them to put on that dress? your body, yeah. And I think sometimes even people afterwards look at their pictures and go like, oh, yeah, why did I do that to myself? What was I thinking? I know it was on sale, but good gosh. Right. Or free. Yeah, yeah, that too. Can't turn down a deal when it comes to a dress. <laughs> sometimes even if we should. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, on your special day, you want what you want. You want to be beautiful. You want to feel pretty. You right. want to feel beautiful. And those dresses that the the people at the bridal shop were bringing out, they were not making her feel pretty at all. Right. And that's also a good reason for having your friends there because they are salespeople and they want you to buy something and usually something that's at the very limit of your budget, if not above. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they're going to push something that you may not think is great, but they're like, oh, but, you know, it looks great on you. And a it's great from this commission designer. for me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I've been a salesperson. I, I get that whole uh, upselling. Um, I never enjoyed it, but, you know, it, it's part of the gig for sure. You got to make a living. Yeah. Yep, yep. But on $6,000, I'm not sure she could have done much. <laughs> right. And many of these dresses cost as much as a, uh, as a car. Yes, and not just the cheapest model. Like, mm -hmm. there's some options included. You, know? <laughs> yeah, you can pay two, three hundred thousand for a dress. Yeah, yeah, depending on who and, and how unique that, that outfit is, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and Judy just went along because she knew her sister was, you know, footing most of the bill, but she really did want to have her wedding. Right, right. And so, um, so what happens in the end here? Tell, 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 even though, again, people have probably seen the episode, but what happens for, for Judy? Well, at the end of this episode or chapter, uh, you realize that Judy had the staff just just uh, teasing her with these ugly dresses. And then she told them and informed them, please bring out the dress that I think she would like. And when Teresa finally, uh, Judy finally saw the dress, she's like, this is the one. So she cried when she saw it, put it on, came out. Everybody approved it. She finally got the dress she wanted until she saw the price. And she's like, there's no way I could afford this. And Teresa said it's already been paid for. So that's what a big sister do. And she accepted the dress. And everybody's ready now for the wedding. And this is the dress from way back in chapter two or three when the they first were first one she saw, the, yes. Yeah. So Her sister never forgot that. Yeah. So she has the dream dress. Yeah. So now they're ready for their double wedding. Yes. So um, do we know how much time has passed since the first attempt at the wedding? This is three months later. Okay. Yeah, 90 days later. Okay. So that was my question because, you know, I, I, having had a couple of weddings, I know what that process is like and it can be torturous. Mm -hmm. That's why they're doing a double so they can do it together. Yeah. You know, one person could not pull that off, but it's Teresa, Judy, and all Judy friends and her um, future mother-in-law. Ten women can do it. Yeah. Yeah, you'd need that that village because I don't think in... 90 days I don't I know I couldn't have recovered enough to uh, to do all that again you know it was enough work I had to recover sleep much less recover all that planning even if we had followed the manual to the to the letter again but something like that I don't think oh you would want it to linger right you know, right that's okay. true too because then you get second doubts maybe he's not the one she's not the one and you never get married right so you right. gotta do it fresh way they still have the sympathy for you. Right, <laughs> including Tim. <laughs> yeah, because Tim, they waited a year. He wouldn't have let them use that strip club again. 
the parking lot, but he still remembers them freshly from a few months ago when he made that big profit. So he said, of course you can come back. I don't know if they'd worn the same outfits. Tim might have let them use the parking lot again. Yeah, you just never know, right? Probably had it on a poster for him. Right. <laughs> well, he certainly had a mental picture. So <laughs> Exactly. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for Chapter 11. We'll see you all again next week for uh, Chapter 12. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to it and joining us and uh, listening to it and supporting us on uh, Relative Wedding Explained. And please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you would like.